All right, so today is going to be about UVs and UV unwrapping. Uh, UVs are, UV specifically refers to a, a texture coordinate system. So just like in 3D, we have the X, Y, and Z axis. Um, with UVs, we have the U and V axis. It's a 2D axis um, because we're putting 2D images on a three-dimensional object. So that'll start to become a little bit more clear as we get into it. Um, you can think about adding textures to 3D models kind of like these paper box character things that you can print out, cut out, and then fold into a 3D object, right? So let's not click there for full resolution, all right? Uh, Peppercore, if you're familiar with that, um, is another example of it where you've got these 2D images that you cut out fold, tape together, or glue together, and then you get a 3D object. So what we need to do is that process, but in reverse. We need to take our 3D objects that have no textures on them, create, make them flat, basically, um, so that we can put a 2D image on them. And then Maya will automatically you know, map that into 3D space. But we need to tell Maya where to put these seams, where to cut the 3D models, so that they can lay flat with the least amount of distortion. Okay. Um, here's a really, really simple example. Uh, we've got this simple mushroom shape, uh, and then you can basically see where they cut the mushroom apart and laid it flat to apply these 2D textures to it, and then um, you see the 3D version of it. So that's the process that we're going through. You've already modeled it. We're going to unwrap it so that we can then apply our textures to it. Um, and get a, a good, uh, a good uh, image map. Uh, this can get very complicated, and there's a whole lot of things to consider, uh, not just where you put your seams, but how you unwrap and lay out your UV sets. Uh, so here's what one character UV layout might look like. Um, here's what another, this is more of a, a video game optimized character. Um, but you can see all the different components. Sometimes all of these, they're called shells, uh, these UV shells, so like islands. Um, sometimes they are all sized so that, you know, proportional to each other. Sometimes they'll make the face larger because that's usually where the camera is and that's where you want the most texture detail. All right, so we're going to go about this in a relatively traditional way of um, unwrapping, cutting seams, and laying them out. There are other tools out there to do this. Um, one of those is Substance Painter, which is an Adobe product. Uh, it's f You get a free one-year renewable license if you're a student um, or a teacher to use at home. You can't use it in, um, in school officially. Um, otherwise, it's a 30-day free trial, and the cheapest option is, I believe, 20 bucks a month or 200-something a year. Um, so this is a more kind of intuitive workflow um, where you are, you know, painting in real time on the models. Uh, you know, unfortunately we don't have the time or the resources to get into this, but that is out there. A um, bunch of different ways to do this, but let's focus on how we're going to do it. And so I'm in Maya, and I just have a simple plane. All right, just the default plane all it is, uh, and I'm first going to change my workspace to the UV editing workspace. Okay. It's going to open up a couple of things. It's going to open up the UV editor. Okay, We can zoom out on and we can see the UV editor here. And then uh, on the right, we have our normal attribute editor. We've got tool settings, which for me is usually over on the left. And then we have the UV toolkit, which is a bunch of different options and we'll get to mo well we'll get to some of these um, a bunch of different options to manipulate the UV sets here okay so one thing you need to know is that by default all of these primitives have their own UVs right already laid out sometimes they work most of the time they don't and you have to add your own uh, but we'll start with just these default ones because it's going to help you kind of understand the relationship between UVs 
and the mesh geometry itself. Overview of the interface here. Um, and I'm just focused on the UV editor. Like I said, this is a 2D workspace because textures are 2D things, right? They're just basically images or patterns, 2Ds that you apply to the, the faces. Um, it's also kind of like wrapping a box for Christmas, right? Um, adding wrapping paper, it's the same sort of thing, if that helps you think about what's happening. So we've got a bunch of different menus up here. Um, some are also rep represented by buttons in the UV toolkit. So like we've got the create menu, but we also have the create tab. And you can see there's, there's some redundancy of operations there. You can also go up to the UV menu up top and you've got the same options. So a bunch of different ways you can get to these things. Um, use whichever you're most comfortable with. Uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about these menus. I like the UV toolkit better for getting to the vast majority of these things. Um, yeah, so we can kind of ignore just these top menus. But we've got some icons that I do want to call out. So we have, this first is just the wireframe view of your UVs. Um, this is the default view, you just see this white grid, and it looks very similar to, turn that off, um, yours might look like this by default. But it looks, you can see, very similar to the grid, but it's, it is a little bit different. This is showing the UVs versus this is the mesh. Um, next to it, we have this first option, shades the UVs, and that helps you to tell if there are UV sets that are overlapping or if they are um, reversed. If they're reversed, if I just grab a UV, and just kind of move it around. You can see I kind of fold it over itself and now it's red, telling me that there's, it's kind of backwards. Um, next to it we have the uh, UV distortion option. And so when we're unwrapping these UVs, we want to keep them, we don't want any stretching in, in what we're doing because um, we don't want distortion in the images. If we have a wood plank texture and for some reason you know, it starts to get really weird and wavy at, at one corner, that's a problem, and we want to avoid that. This is one of those tools that will help us avoid that. You can see as I stretch out these um, UVs, it turns blue, telling me that there's some distortion. Um, if the UVs are closer, or the closer the UVs are in shape to the geometry over here on the left, the closer to white that appears. If I compress them, you can see that they get red. And if I stretch them, you can see that they get blue. Okay, that'll be another tool we'll come back to to help us, you know, keep things <coughs> organized. But I can turn that off for now. Um, next to it, we have options to display the texture borders or the shell borders, and uh, grid display. If you want to see that, I'll keep that on. Now, the last couple of things that I want to call out. Uh, we have uh, image uh, display image, so if you have a texture image applied, this will show it. We also have a UV test grid, a checker map. This is going to be very important. We're going to keep this on most of today. Um, this will help you, again, evaluate how well you have unwrapped your UVs, um, how well you, everything is laid out to minimize distortion. Again, if I take these, I'm going to turn off the image texture so I can work in the UV view but still see the texture applied to my object. Um, but if I take these UVs here and I stretch them out, you can see how that texture is mapped to the plane. You see we're getting that distortion and that's absolutely what we don't want. Okay, same thing if I go really close, you can see that stretch. Okay, things to avoid. So the UV will help us make sure that we're minimizing this distortion and this stretching. Um, it'll also, as we get more complicated, it'll help us see if all the texture is going to be relative size. Um, and then the last thing that we want to do is just want to make sure that our image ratio is on. I'll actually do it through the UV menu, but, well, that's, that's that. never mind. We'll come back to that. Um, let me get that back to just a straight 
normal UV layout. That's the, the basic plane. Um, should also note that if I select this UV shell, so I'm just holding down the right mouse button to get this menu. We've got edge, face, vertex like we're used to, but also UV, um, which is like a vertex, but it's a, a texture vertex, kind of. Uh, and UV shell, which is everything that is connected. Uh, so if I hover over, you can see the whole thing is selected because this is just one piece. But as I select this piece and move it around in texture space, I'll turn that on so you can see. Um, you can see how I'm translating the texture. And we've got this grid coordinate system in the UV editor. It goes from 0 to 1, um, and then 2, and 3. But we, we want to keep, and we're going we're gonna to work to get all of our UVs, once they're completely laid out and unwrapped, we want them all just to stay in 0 to 1. Otherwise, that texture is going to start repeating, and you're going to get weird seams. Um, there, there are <coughs> uses for the additional regions, but we're just going to focus on 0 to 1. Keep it simple here. So, But you can see what happens if you go over and you get this kind of repeating here. Um, you can also, in the UV editor, you can move, rotate, and scale like you would in, in 3D. So I can scale it down. You can see as I scale it down, that texture appears larger because we're just focusing on a smaller amount of space that's being mapped to the same size geometry. Right, so it has to stretch it further to get that coverage. Um, and then, yeah, you can rotate as well. Uh, I also want to call out in the in the viewport. You can see that this is this is just a plane. Okay, it's just a flat surface. If I look at the back side of it, you can see my test grid is reversed. We're seeing the the kind of the mirror image of the texture on the back side of the plane. Okay. So that's one reason why normals are important, so you know which way it's facing, and then also, you know, if you give it some depth, um, that's less likely to happen to, to see the backside of faces. That can also happen if your um, if your UVs are reversed. Okay, so if I select this UV shell, and if I just go to transform scale, and I just I'm going to flip it, you can see one that my shell turns red, telling me that it's reversed. And then also, in the perspective view, you can see that the texture is backwards, which sometimes might work and might be fine. But if you have anything that is recognizable, like words, um, then this would be obviously be a problem. So um, more things to keep in mind there. All right, so that's, that's the plane. Um, Let's look at something that's actually 3D, and we'll hopefully get a better sense of 3D space. So I just added a default cube. Um, and in the UV editor, I still have the test grid on. OK, so we can kind of see what's going on. I'm also going to turn on the image um, plane display image so that we can see it in 2D and 3D space. Um, like I said, all these primitives have default UVs. This is what the default cube UV looks like. And we can kind of see how, uh, how this relates in the 2D space. So we've got all these different, let me turn off the grid so we can see it a little bit better there. We have the basic geometry of our cube, right, six faces, six square faces, laid out. Um, if we look at the test grid, you see that 1 and V is on this face. And in the viewport, that's actually the backside face of our cube. All right, so you can kind of see how it's wrapping around. Uh, if we go into face mode in the viewport, you can kind of hover over each face and see where that is represented on our UV map. Okay, so if we were then going to take this, and eventually we will, take this, bring it into Photoshop, and add a texture to it, it's really important to know which parts of the UV map correspond to which parts of your object. Okay, otherwise, you won't know where to put the right texture. Um, so this is the default one. It is laid out 
uh, where each of the faces is connected, so it's still all one shell, one UV shell. Um, we can, if we take that shell, we can move, rotate, and scale like, like normal. Uh, you can adjust where things fall. But what if, let me, let me find a good uh, example here. OK. So I've positioned this shell so, so that this top face, we've got this 0 here on the side, and it's getting cut off. Now, logically, we would expect that 0 to kind of wrap around the side, right, and be visible on the side. But it isn't. And that's because in the UV editor, oops, turn that off. This edge, I'll select the edge, you can see is actually split apart. Right, it's it's a it's a seam. There's a seam in in the shell, separating them, and that's why we don't have this continuous uh, texture in the 3D view. And this is why UVs can get tricky, is because these default layouts usually don't work. Um, so what we need to do is make a custom UV map. So let's do that now. Uh, aside from a plane, a cube is probably going to be the easiest thing to UV unwrap. Um, so what we need to do is first get rid of the default UVs. So I'm going to select the cube in object mode. I'm going to go up to UV menu and delete UVs. Get rid of them. They're gone. All right. Now we can add our own. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to start with um, projecting UVs. It's called projecting. Um, there's a few different options that we have. You'll see them in the UV toolkit under the Create menu or up in the UV menu. Um, and we've got, what is that, eight different options. We're really just going to focus, at least to start, on probably two, and then we'll expand out from there as time allows. Um, but we're just going to start with a planar projection. And what that is, is it's going to create a new UV map from a, a planar perspective. Okay, so I'm just going to go to planar. I'm going to choose our options. There's one that we need to make sure is on, and that's this keep image width height ratio. Okay, you want to make sure that that image ratio stays uh, correct. So make sure that's checked. Otherwise, you can get some stretching and distortions with your image textures. Um, and I'm just going to hit project. Okay? And look at what we have. So, there's a couple things that we have. We have in the viewport, we have this square kind of widget. And we have this, we have a UV texture, but only on the top. I can turn on the UV texture in the viewport. I hope this looks okay in uh, on YouTube because I can I can see the encoding kind of being tricky here but um, so we have this widget but we only have textures on the top and the bottom and that's because the planar projection is just working along the y-axis just this vertical axis um, and that's the only those are the only parts that are getting uh, <coughs> getting projected all right, so what we need to do is we need to separate them out. Because we like this, but if we want to texture these other faces, we have to go from a different angle. But what I want us to do first is we're going to select some edges. Oops, come on. Okay, I'm going to select just these top four edges. And I'm going to, in this cut and sew menu, we need to cut these apart. All right, because these are good, so we're going to separate them out, move them off to the side for now, and then, oops, wrong button, there we go, uh, and then we can move on to the rest. So I'm going to hit cut, and we can select that and move it off to the side. Okay, you can see how the texture moves, don't worry about that for now. Selected those edges, I cut them apart, and I'm moving them off to the side. It doesn't matter where, just out of the way. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom here. So I'm going to select, go to edge mode, 
going to select these edges, those four edges, and I'm gonna hit cut. And again, I'm just going to move them off to the side. Whoops, I think I missed a cut. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. You just want to make sure that you have just that face selected. That's I was just moving multiple edges. So I'll move that off to the side too. Now we have two sides that are unwrapped, or well, they're projected, right? So they have a texture on them. The other four sides don't. And so we need to do the same thing. I'm going to go back to object mode, select the object. Or actually, we can select just the front and back faces. And this is going to be the Z axis. So UV, planar, Z axis, project. OK, there we go. <coughs> now we have a texture on both of those. Again, we can, I'm going to select the shells. So I'm just going to use the shortcut right up here in the UV toolkit, UV shell selection. Then I can select those shells and move them off to the side again. And then we have two final faces. I'll select those UV planar projection X axis is the last one that I haven't done. Project those. And again, I can move those shells out of the way. OK. All of our faces kind of separated out. And we can see we've got a good grid on each side, right? I don't want to do that. Um, there's a couple of things that we need to do, though. We don't want this texture to be spread out all over the place. This, is, this would be a very difficult thing to get a texture to line up on for all sides. And the other thing that we need to do, besides just kind of recombine them in the way that we want, is if we orbit around our cube in, in the 3D space, we can see that some of these sides, it's, uh, it's mirrored, it's backwards. Okay, So we need to fix that as well. So if we go back into the UV editor and we're going to turn on the um, shaded to, to show overlapping, three of our squares are red, and that means that they're reversed. So we need to reverse them back so they're uh, you know, pointing the right way. So we can start with this one, because that's the one that I have selected. And in our UV toolkit, we have this transform menu. And if we scroll down to the towards the bottom, in the scale section, we have a flip button. So I'm just going to click flip. And now it's blue. Do the same thing for these other two. So if we're looking at this face in the, in the 3D viewport, we can see how it responds when I click flip. Now those numbers and letters are facing the correct way. Same thing on the bottom one here is the last one that I haven't done. I'm going to select that, click flip, and now that's blue. So that means that our texture won't be mirrored on any side. That's great. The next step in unwrapping this cube is going to be to start combining them back together, but this time in a layout that we want. So there was nothing wrong with the default layout. Um, but if we want the texture to continue across the top here like, uh, like this, then we need to change where those seams are. Um, so let's start with this top face. Okay, I'm going to move this top face to the center of my UV uh, editor, just because that's going to be my focal point. I'm not worried about its exact positioning in the editor. I just want it to be in the center because that's where I'm going to start. And I want to connect each of these four sides to it. Okay, I don't want there to be a seam uh, anywhere on this top side. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to edge mode and I'm going to select, first I'll select this front edge. And you can see in the UV editor it selects both this edge here and this edge here because they are the same. It's just two sides of the same seam. 
and we want to bring that seam back together. It doesn't need to be cut apart. So with those selected, in my cut and sew menu set here in the UV toolkit, we have this button here called Stitch Together. And that's what we want to do. We're going to stitch those together. You can see the tooltip as I hover over it. Uh, so select a hard border edge, a shared border edge, excuse me, to stitch neighboring UV shells together by moving, rotating, and scaling the, one of them to fit. So what it's going to do is it's going to stitch these together, and then it's going to move this whole shell into the right spot, or it might move this one up, but it's going to move them so that they're connected and visually kind of laid out pleasing. A lot of the terminology for this process is kind of borrowed from sewing. So if you are familiar at all with um, sewing in any form, some of this terminology will be familiar to you because it's a similar thing as, as it's working with a 2D medium to make a 3D object. So uh, I've got those edges selected. I'm going to click Stitch Together, and you can see what happens. I can select this UV shell. You can see that when I hover over one of these faces, both are selected because it is one continuous shell. We can also look here in the perspective view and see that indeed the texture does seamlessly wrap over the edge, which is exactly what we were hoping for. That is a, a successful thing and uh, we can move on. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other sides here. I'm going to select this right side edge. You'll see the two edges that are selected, right? These are both sides of the same seam. I'm gonna stitch those together. Same thing for the back side. We'll stitch those together and I'll zoom out here a little bit so you can see what's happening. And this right side, stitch together, or left side, that's what that is, that's left. Left side, we can stitch that together too. So we've got five of the six sides all lined up. Now, doing it this way, we can see that the, the texture does not wrap around this edge. Okay, these are things that you, you need to consider. We can't really have a, well, it's a lot more difficult to have a seamless texture go around all of these. Um, you kind of have to just pick the best option for where you're placing your seams. There are ways to do it, but it's a different process. That's what like something like Substance Painter or um, Projection Painting uh, would come into play. But again, we're just going to focus on, on UVs today. Um, but I do have the seamless wrap on the front and on the back and all leading from these sides. And then the last thing is this bottom face. And we can really choose how we want to connect it. Um, I'm just going to do this front bottom edge of the cube. And I'll click Stitch Together. And now I have a very similar shape. I've basically just kind of moved one face from connected on the long strip to on the top. Um, but that's just where I chose to have my, um, my seams. I want my seams on the side and not along the top. Now that we have our seams placed where we want them, um, this is now all one continuous UV shell, which sometimes you, you, you'll get and other times you'll need them to be separate. Um, that's okay either way, but if you can make them all one shell, it's just sometimes an easier thing to do. Uh, so now that we have them all connected, uh, they're laid out well, you can see all of the just zoom in here. All the squares are the same relative size. Okay, so each each face we're getting similar amount of texture information. That's great. Um, we don't need to unfold it again because it's already in a good spot. So the last thing that we need to do is lay it out, and this is where we want to have everything fit in this zero to one space. So I'm going to click in the layout, Arrange and Layout section, all the way at the bottom, Layout. Do that, and it automatically packs it into the zero to one space. Okay. And then from here, um, we're good to go, and we can export this and bring it into Photoshop and start texturing it. Uh, but if you wanted to uh, change this up a little bit, you know, you could still rotate it however you wanted to. Um, in this case, what we we could move it all over to the side and scale it up, and we'd actually get a little bit more texture detail. But then you're also texturing at an angle, and that's kind of a weird thing. So I probably wouldn't do that. Uh, but we can move it around if we want. 
the let's say we wanted this part of the texture in it then we can we can adjust it that way um, you know whatever you need to do you can do that way to unwrap a cube if you wanted to change it uh, you absolutely could let's say I want to move this top face and I want the seam to be here and I want it to be continuous on the back side then what I can do is I can select this edge and we can cut that uh, and then select this bottom edge and we can stitch that together and now we have a capital T instead of a lowercase one and then again we can just lay that out and things fit nicely um, very similar to what we had to start it's slightly different but do we have that flexibility to go back and forth with cut and, and stitch together um, and lay out you know we went back and actually re we kind of started from zero here and you don't always have to do that um, but I w wanted to show that process and uh, we're gonna do it again but this time with a different shape so now let's add a cylinder and move this over to the side I'm also gonna change my whoops that's not what I wanted I remember what the shortcut is on Mac, Alt B, it's probably the same on Windows, will change the background of your workspace. So I'm going to move to a darker gray. Hopefully, that'll make the UV editor a little bit easier for you to read. I'll turn that off as well. Okay, so this is what the default UVs for a cylinder look like. And if we look at how that maps in the 3D view, uh, viewport, you can see that there's a couple of issues. Um, one being that. The, well, actually, it's really just one issue, and that's that these are not squares. We're getting a lot of distortion here, and we need to get rid of that. So we're going to start the similar way with the cube. I'm going to just delete the existing UVs. And now we have, uh, we have a, a different projection option, cylindrical. And because this is a cylinder, it seems to make sense to use a cylindrical projection. This is the same sort of thing that you'd use for any cylindrical shape. So pens and pencils, mugs, um, you know, anything else that is tubular, if you will. So uh, I can double check the options and there's not really anything in there that we need to worry about. So we're just gonna hit project. And let's take a look at what we've got. See, so we've got some weirdness here. The top and the bottom face are terrible. So we'll address that in a moment. Um, but we can also see that really only the front half of the cylinder is unwrapped uh, appropriately. And then we've got, this moves on to a second piece. Um, so let's take a look at this widget. And we can actually make this work a little bit better. If we take the, the UV widget, um, whoops, and I deselected that. There we go. I'm going to grab this red handle. I'm just going to pull it all the way back. Okay. So we get kind of full coverage there. And we can, in the unfold menu, we can unfold that again. Okay. And we can see how that UV set adjusts. Still not there, but it is closer to square than it was before. Um, but we're getting some distortion because it's trying to lay it out flat, but the the top and the bottom here are, are causing some issues. So we want to fix that, and then we'll have a better shot at getting the rest of it flat as well. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing that I did with the cube. I'm going to select the top and the bottom faces, and we're going to planar project those. Okay, so we can select, shift select all of them. Uh, you can also, if we just select the center vertex on each one. And then if you hold down command, right click, and you want to change to faces and to faces, it'll select all of those faces. Okay, and then from there we can project planar, that's the Y axis. Click project. And then in our UV editor, we can grab those shells and move them out of the way. Okay, so now we have a good visible texture on the top and the bottom faces. 
and now it's just the the back side that we need to clean up the, my caps separated uh, if I turn on my um, shaded view you can see that one of these is red that means it's reversed you can see that the letters are backwards there so I'm going to select that shell and then in my transform menu we can just flip that and now it's blue and that's wonderful okay so we're close um, now what we need to do is this center section of the cylinder we've got some issues and well we've got one main issue and that's that the cylinder should be straight across it should be equal size faces and we shouldn't get any of this weird waviness that we are seeing so to fix that uh, we can try just unfolding it again and you can see that that basically does it it lays it out a little bit straighter it doesn't have any of the caps selected to it so it's got a little bit more freedom to stretch out we can turn on our distortion you can see that that's all white and actually if I undo that this is before we unwrapped it again you can see that we've got some stretching and that's why it's blue there and then we've got some red which is where it's compressed but if I select that and unfold it again it gets straightened out and now it's white um, we can also we have the align and snap menu and we can let's see where is it there it is uh, we can straighten the UVs out and that's just gonna make it nice and straight aligned uh, that's in the line and snap and I'm sorry it's not in the line and snap it's in unfold straighten UVs and that straightens it out So the last thing that we need to do, well, there's, there's two things that we need to do. Um, one is we need to, to normalize kind of the texture size. Um, and that's something that's referred to as texel density. A texel is like a pixel, but for texture, OK? Um, and, and basically, you, you can see that reflected here in the 3D view, how the grid is larger on the sides than on the top and the bottom. And that means that the top and the bottom have more texel density. They have more detail available to them because the tech, they, they have more pixel, pixels in the, in the texture space than the sides. Um, and we want those to be um, even, especially if we're gonna apply the same kind of texture to everything. It would be weird if, for instance, you had a brick pattern and the brick suddenly got really large or really small on the, on the tops. So, we need to average them. And the way that we're going to do that is uh, if we go up to the transform menu set, and under the or at the bottom we have this texel density set. And what we can do is we can select one shell and click get. Okay, and it gives you a, a number. It's for more or less arbitrary. Um, it gets you a number. And then you can select the other two shells and click set. We'll set them to the same number, and now you can see that everything is the same relative size. All of our checkerboards are the same relative size. And then the last thing we can do is go down to the bottom and lay that out. Oops, make sure we select everything. Lay it out, and there we go. Now we have a nicely laid out cylinder. That works a whole lot better than the initial default cylinder. What I want to talk about is uh, spheres. And spheres are rather difficult things to unwrap. Um, and the process that you go through will vary depending on the specific use case. If, if you Google how to UV unwrap a sphere, you'll get a, a bunch of different options. And um, But let's look at what the default ha is in Maya. So I'll add, I'll add a sphere, let's move it over out of the way, and we'll take a look. I'm also going to isolate selected so we're just focused on the sphere. Um, and by default, the uh, you can see that the grid is a little bit distorted just about everywhere. You know, it get, starts getting wavy up towards the top. So let's, let's do our normal thing where we delete the UVs and there is a spherical projection. 
Uh, there's not really any options to worry about, so you don't have to deal with that. But we'll just hit project. Oops, select the object. Spherical projection, it's also up here in the uh, poly modeling tool shelf. I will click on that. Oops, object mode, select it. There we go. Okay. So this is what we get by default. And you can see the grid is even worse than it was before. Um, there is, I'll kind of, I'll scale this up so we can see it. There is the widget for the UV projection. We can grab these sides and, and give it full coverage. And we can unfold that again. Okay, and now what we get is something that is definitely better. Here's what the default, well, um, not default, but here's what spherical mapping gives you. Um, it's okay. If I smooth it out, it looks a little bit better than if I don't smooth it out. So three on the number pad definitely helps. Um, we do have this little offshoot up here for some reason. I'm going to select that edge right there. And I'm just going to sew that or stitch it together. And we will unfold everything again. Uh, oops, let's grab the shell and unfold that. We still have that. All right, let's go ahead and stitch that together. Does not want to stitch together. How about so? That okay? That did it. Um. So it's okay, and if we're only going to see one side of the sphere, you know that's that's pretty decent. Um. It gets a little bit more distorted towards the edges, but it's not awful. Uh, sometimes if you're not going to see, maybe you're not going to see the top edge of it, you might be able to get away with, you know, chopping off this top edge, cut that apart, and then we can unwrap this shell separately, move it off to the side. And then we might have better luck unfolding it here. Um, you can try straightening UVs, but it's going to be kind of a mess. You can see that's we don't want that, so we'll just unfold that again. Um, like I said, it's really a case-by-case -case basis. Um, putting seams wherever you can manage them to help, help it be smoothed out. Um, and sometimes you may not need to unwrap a sphere if you're just doing a, a procedural texture or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't really have a, a specific path, but I did want to mention it um, so you can at least get closer to to a clean result um, with the sphere. So that's it for kind of the intro to UV unwrapping. I know that was just primitives. The next thing I'm going to do is it's going to be a separate video, but we're going to UV unwrap a mug, something a little bit more practical and a little bit more irregular um, and get to a good place with that and, and hopefully that'll be enough of a jumping off point for you guys to start to unwrap your scenes.